So I've been an Apple computer user now, guys, since 2010 when I bought my first ever iMac computer and I love that thing. Now, I was a little nervous at first being a strong and heavy PC user for so many years, like, like literally since birth when I had that gateway computer. A lot of y'all don't really remember the gateway computer, but the transition, guys, was easy and it really wasn't as scary as I thought it was gonna be. So over the years, guys, I've developed a checklist of things that I personally like to do when setting up a new Mac computer. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some of my personal settings as well as some tips and tricks that you guys can use on your brand new iMac computer or just any other Apple laptop or even Mac mini. So let's go ahead and break it down. All right, so the first thing that I instantly turn off that is on by default that Apple does is automatically syncing of your iCloud documents and even your desktop folders and stuff. If you guys have been rocking with me for a while, then you guys already know. Now wait, before we actually get into all of that, before I tell you guys the sauce there, I want you guys to go ahead and comment down below how many likes is on this video at the time of you guys watching it because I'm always curious on who's watching within the first 500 to 1,000 likes. But anyway, all right, so let's get back to why we're here, what we're talking about. So I always tell you guys to buy an external drive and save your stuff to that drive and not really your machine's built-in storage. This is because saving too much to it over time, guys, can slow down your machine considerably if you guys are not managing your storage space right. And I already know. You ain't got to tell me. I know a lot of y'all out there ain't really managing that storage like you should be, even though you say you are. <laughs> now, I recommend you guys check out this site called the AppleNest.com that sells a solid amount of Apple accessories for a really affordable price tag. And one particular item that I recommend that solves your problem here and having an external storage, but it still really looks clean, is buying this minimum USB-C hub that has an internal enclosure for you guys to be able to put a SATA SSD drive into it to go ahead and expand your computer storage for way, way cheaper than what Apple is actually charging you. Now I talked about one that I use and I recommend that is so clutch for the M1 Mac Mini, and a bunch of you guys told me thanks for recommending that to you. Well, guys, you are welcome. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you guys out. You help me, I help you. For example, Apple is going to charge you guys $800 more for two terabytes of SSD storage. Well, just do what I do and buy this device for 99 bucks and buy the Samsung E70 Evo one terabyte for 115 bucks, only costing you guys $214, opposed to buying Apple's extended storage for 400 to 800 hundred dollars more which is just crazy now i'll go ahead and link down below for you guys to be able to pick up then all you guys got to do is just velcro it onto the back of the m1 imac machine like so and you have extra storage while keeping your machine looking sleek as well as minimal back to the automatic syncing so i recommend going into your system preferences click on apple id and on icloud drive click options and where it says desktop and documents folder you want to go ahead and uncheck this that way it doesn't just download a bunch of stuff that you guys have all the way up in the cloud from a whole nother machine onto your new M1 iMac. The next thing I do is make sure I have the latest updates as soon as I take it out of the box and I plug it up. So I go up to the Apple logo and I click on about this Mac and under the overview tab, just click on software update to go ahead and check to see if you are on the latest Mac OS update before I actually start doing any type of heavy configuration on my machine. When you guys actually buy it from an Apple store or just online or whatever, most likely it's not gonna be updated to the latest firmware. So you always wanna make sure you guys check that out. Now, the next thing I like to do is organize my dock on my machine. Now, the first thing I tend to do is set mine to high show when I need it. So in order to set this up, all you guys gotta do is go back into your system preferences, click on dock and menu bar, and where it says automatically hide and show the dock, I make sure that this is checked. Now, what this is gonna do is give you guys way more screen real estate to be able to play with, and it just looks way cleaner on your machine. Now, you can also right click on the line here and you can select turn hide and on and it will also hide the dock as well. Now, if you wanted to, you can also move this bar either to the right side of your screen or the left side of your screen by just right clicking where that line is and on the dock hover over position and screen and select right or left. Now, you can also resize this dock by clicking and holding on the line and dragging up on your mouse to make it bigger or dragging down on your mouse to make it smaller. Now, the next thing that I actually like to do is remove any, and I mean any, 
unnecessary things that I may have in my dock by just right clicking on the application and only keeping applications that I use the most. Now my rule of thumb for this is, have I used that app in the past week? If the answer is no, then I get it out of here. <laughs> so all I have to do guys is go to that dock and on the app you want to remove, right click on it, go to options and select remove from dock and just like that you're done. Now although I don't recommend you all save things to your desktop because it just becomes a cluttering mess and we talked about buying that USB-C SSD hub that I just mentioned to you guys early in this video from the applenest.com to go ahead and help you guys all out with that. But if you are the type of person that don't want to listen to me, you don't want to listen to C-Kid and you do go ahead and save a bunch of stuff to your desktop and it's all cluttered up, then I recommend you guys turn on stacks. This is going to take related file types like photos, videos, screenshots, and it's going to group them together like you guys see here. So in order for you guys to be able to set this up, all you guys got to do is just go up to view at the top and then select use stack and it will collapse everything and make your desktop go from looking like this mess to this clean look now by default it groups by file type but you can also have it grouped by the date or you can group it by tags if you guys actually tag your files which i don't know too many people who actually do that but if you do you can actually group by that <laughs> now the other thing to me is a must is within my finder window screen that is for me to see the file path so it makes it easier for me to be able to navigate within the file menu by turning on show path bar as well as the show status bar and you guys can see the path bar is added as well as with the status bar I can easily see how many files I have in each folder but mainly I use that to see how much storage I actually have within my external drives at the time that I told you guys to buy <laughs> now also within that folder structure I also can change mine to list as well as a column view just because this structure is just way easier for me to be able to see everything that I have within my folders now one thing that you guys may notice is that by default your scroll bars on your iMac are disabled and you have to scroll first in order for them to be able to appear but to me I like to actually have them there already so to turn this on you just go to system preferences general and where it says show scroll bars you want to go ahead and select always and now you always can see your scroll bars no matter what now the next thing if you guys have an Apple Watch hold on let, let, me, let me grab my Apple Watch oh <laughs> you definitely want to turn this feature on and that is unlock your Apple computer with your Apple Watch. So what this actually means is anytime you guys have your Apple Watch on and you want to unlock your computer, all you guys have to do is literally just be right next to your computer and it will unlock it using Apple Watch as authentication. To go ahead and set this up, all you guys have to do is go to system preferences, security and privacy, and under general select use your Apple Watch to unlock apps and your Mac. This is a really dope feature. Highly recommend you guys turn that on. So whenever you guys are trying to bring video files, photo files, your computer is always going to try and find a default app to be able to open those with. Now, sometimes it does a pretty decent job, but I like to actually set this up myself. For my audio, if we go into Get Info and we go down to Open With, I can actually change this default to be Apple Music or QuickTime or even Adobe Audition to launch whenever I want to open this file. Then I can go ahead and select Change All. This means every file that is a .wav file will open in Apple Music for me or whatever you guys actually decide to choose. And you can set this up also the same for photos. So for example, if I want a JPEG to always open in Photoshop, I can do that. Or if I want a RAW file to always always open up in Lightroom, I can do that as well. And the same thing goes for movies. If you want your .mov files to open up in a different app, you can do that as well. And then you can click change all and it will set it for any of those file types to open up in the default settings that you guys have. Now, the next thing I'll set up is my mail app with my email addresses. And I'm not gonna necessarily show you all of that, but if you guys have Gmail, you can set this up within the mail app and then you can just log in using your Gmail account and then boom, it's gonna save it without you guys having to go into a physical web browser. And the last thing that I like to do is set what I like my default browser to be. Now, most people out there probably use Safari if you have a Mac. And if you do, then you enjoy that browser, then I say keep using it. Don't listen to me, don't let me deter you because it is the most efficient web browser out there to use in regards to the use of your memory on your iMac or just Apple machine. But for me, I like to use Safari and Chrome. Depending on what I'm using the web for, I'll use Chrome for certain things and then I'll use Safari for certain things. I find myself actually using Chrome the most and I always set that as my default browser. So yeah, this is what I personally like to do every single time I get 
a new Mac computer and setting it up to be able to be productive on it. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure you guys hit that like button as well as go ahead and subscribe because we are on our way to 100K subs by the end of this year. I feel it, I know we can do it. So if you rock with me, go ahead and join the squads. You can also check out some other Apple content that I have right up here on the screen. Thanks again for watching. See y'all in the next one. Squad. <laughs> okay, okay, iMac, let's play. M1, it's May. Bossed up, cause it's my birthday. Woo. Undressing like I'm trying to get the first base. Uh -huh. With these chips, man, they leading in the first place. Good. With all these colors, man, I'm trying to catch the bouquet. Tell me what you need, more bars, greed halfway. Touch, Touch the, the keys, keys, never freeze. Let it breathe, matching these, man, please. Magic mouse in the house, when in doubt, let it out. Gain clout, let's proud. If you rock with this intro, hit the like button. If you proud, it's a sub, say it loud. Uh -huh. Let's get this video poppin'. Spit some facts, break it down one time for the squad. Squad. <laughs>